Thank you, Lord. We are again in New Jersey and New Stardom. On this feast of the beheading of St. John the Baptist. And uh, the epistle for this feast of the beheading of St. John the Baptist is August 29th. It's taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1. In those days, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Gird up thy loins, and arise, and speak to Judah all that I command thee. Be not afraid in their presence, for I will make thee not to fear their countenance. For behold, I have made thee this day a fortified city, and a pillar of iron, and a wall of brass, over all land the kings of Judah, to the princes thereof, and to the priests, and to the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, and shall not prevail. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. In the Gospel. Take that according to St. Mark, chapter 6. At that time Herod sent and apprehended John, and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, the wife of Philip his brother, because he had married her. For John said to Herod, is, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Now Herodias laid snares for him, and was desirous to put him to death and could not. For Herod feared John, knowing him to be a just and holy man, and kept him when he heard him, and when he heard him did many things, and he heard him willingly. And when a convenient day was come, Herod made a supper for his birthday, for the princes and tribunes and chief men of Galilee. And when the daughter of the same Herodias had come in, and had danced, and pleased Herod and them that were at the table with him, the king said to the damsel, Ask of me what thou wilt, and I will give it thee. And he swore to her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask, I will give thee, though it be the half of my kingdom. Who, when he was gone out, said to her mother, What shall I ask? But she said, The head of John the Baptist. And when she was come in, immediately with haste to the king, she asked, saying, I will that forthwith thou give me in a dish the head of John the Baptist. And the king was struck sad. Yet because of his oath, and because of them that were with him at table, he would not displease her, but sending an executioner, he commanded that his head should be brought in a dish. And he beheaded him in the prison, and brought his head in a dish, and gave it to the damsel, and the damsel gave it to her mother. Which his disciples, hearing, came and took his body, and laid it in a tomb. That's for the words of today's Holy Gospel. It's interesting what the sacred scripture says today about the greatest of all the prophets, St. John the Baptist. And God speaks these words of Jeremiah, but they are applied to St. John the Baptist. In those days, the word of the Lord said to the very young Jeremiah, the young boy who is going to be made into a prophet. And he tells him in the very beginning of the book of Jeremiah, Gird up thy loins. Arise, and speak to Judah all that I command thee. Be not afraid in their presence, and I will make thee not to fear their countenance. For I behold this day have made thee a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass, over all the, la over all the land, the kings of Judah, the princes thereof, the priests, and they shall fight against thee, and they shall not prevail. St. John the Baptist is greater than Jeremiah. And what does God say? From St. John the Baptist, I will make thee at this day a fortified city, an unconquerable city, a pillar of iron that cannot be broken, a wall of brass over all the land, to the kings of Judah, the princes thereof, and to the priests and the people of the land, and they shall fight against thee, and they shall not prevail, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. So there is a great power in John the Baptist, and a great power in Jeremiah. And the, Jew, the Pharisees and Sadducees hate St. John the Baptist. And they want him dead. And all of the, the Herod, Herod has a fear of John the Baptist. He, and he, he is the one who will kill him. Now it's interesting how it happens. Because Herod, it tells us right there in the gospel, he feared John the Baptist. He liked John the Baptist. He listened to his words willingly. 
And surely this is not the one that would kill him. Because the enemy has come with machine guns. The enemy has come with nuclear bombs, with cannons, with all manner of hate. And they cannot harm him. He is delivered from them easily. But Herod, the one that Lord Jesus Christ will say, he is a female fox. He is a feminine fox. That's what our Lord Jesus Christ will say about Herod. And when he said to his apostles, cast out thy pearls before swine. What's the first swine he's thinking of? Herod. And when Herod was happy to see Jesus Christ, remember this same Herod willingly listened to John the Baptist. He liked to hear John the Baptist preach. He loved John the Baptist. He thought he was great. And then he finally got to meet Jesus Christ on Good Friday morning. And he willingly heard Christ. And he willingly wanted to speak to Christ. But what does it say when Jesus Christ came before Herod? At Jesus Tachebat. And Jesus was remaining silent. He will not speak a single word to that impure feminine fox. He will not say one word to him. And notice how John the Baptist died and what brought an end to his preaching. It is called impurity, lust. Those filled with the greatest of all wickedness, who worship Satan, who fight with the side of the devil, who were do human sacrifices, who belong to the kingdom of the devil. You know that it's interesting, if you read the protocols of the elders of Zion, there is an instruction in the protocols. We Jews are going to conquer the whole world, it says in the protocol. And we must understand, in our leaders, there cannot be too much lust. This is the word coming from Satan. In our leaders, there cannot be too much lust, for they must be understand that they must be governed by their minds and not by their passions. This is the decree coming from Satan to the leaders of the world. And when these leaders of the prince of Satan fight against the great high priest or a great against the prophet, they are defeated. Who brought about the death of John the Baptist? It was the impure Herod. And hence we see, look at the history of our holy church down the last 2,000 years. There have been always Satanists. There have been always great evil men. But what caused Martin Luther to form his demonic religion, which is the Protestantism? He himself said, Luther said, I am driven by the power of lust and that it is, cannot be overcome, and that the lust that is in me, it cannot be overcome, said Martin Luther, and therefore God must not want anyone to live according to the virtue, and therefore faith alone saves, because no man can be virtuous. And he began a false religion on the Bible alone and faith alone, and he left behind the Catholic faith, the teachings of Jesus Christ, and why? The sin of lust. The sin of unchastity. Unchastity and the loss of faith are so intimately connected together that you will almost never have one without the other, especially over a period of time. When a culture becomes unchaste, that culture must leave the true faith. And so it does. In the beginning, unchastity does not make a loss of faith. But when it is not combated, and when it dar darkens the soul, one of the effects of it is to destroy the holy faith. John the Baptist stood up against Satan, no problem. St. John the Baptist was an iron, iron pillar. He was a fortified city, as was Jeremiah, and he was unable to be defeated. But yet God allowed what would bring about the death of John the Baptist, the lust of Herod. And notice how easy it was. This is one of the great shocks and great, great mysteries of how death comes in war. How does it come? It was so easy for Herod. Herod said he liked St. John the Baptist. Herod loved to hear his preaching. Herod willingly listened to him. It tells us that in the Gospel of St. Mark today. He willingly listened to him. He liked to hear what John the Baptist had to say. And when the woman came to him and said to him, I want John the Baptist's head in a dish. He felt sorry. He felt sad. 
he didn't want to do it. But for what reason did he do it? He did it, St. Augustine says, because he didn't want to hurt the feelings of an impure crowd. He didn't want to feel the feelings of the people of the world. They were as shallow as shallow can be. There is nothing in them, and they have no loyalty to Herod. They have no care for Herod. They're just there for a party. And he didn't want to offend the people at a party, the drunken people at a party. He didn't want to offend them. And also, after all, he made a promise that he would give whatever that young girl asked. And therefore, he murdered and martyred and killed St. John the Baptist. Now know this concerning the death of St. John the Baptist. Impurity and loss of faith are intimately connected. And also, note also that when God allowed St. John the Baptist to die, it was not because of that fool Herod. And it wasn't even because of his impurity. It was because God was ready for to take John the Baptist to victory. He had finished his work. And it was now time for him to go into eternity. And now time for him to go and wait for Christ to come and open the gates of heaven. And the instrument used was a wicked and impure man. Like St. Augustine says, it is like the chisel used by the artist. The chisel has no value and no ability to make beauty. has no ability to do any good thing. It can only cut. But in the hands of the artist, a beautiful statue can be made. But the chisel did not make the statue. The chisel only cuts. It is the artist that made the statue. It is the statue that is beautiful, and the chisel only cuts. And once it is no longer useful for cutting, the chisel is thrown away and not to be seen again. We don't hang chisels in our churches. We don't hang chisels on our houses. We forget about chisels. They are only things that cut and only useful in the hands of an artisan and useless in the hands of anyone else. And so the worthless Herod was simply a cutting knife, able to chop away pieces of wood, and that's all. And he was allowed to be used by God at the time to send St. John the Baptist to his glory. And he remained useless, and he remained worthless, and he remained disdained. And Jesus Christ himself, also not accustomed to calling people bad names, he himself calls by the worst name he can call, Herod. That impure feminine fox. That's what he calls him. And that, he, that is what he calls this man. And this man will go to judgment. And when he stands before him on Good Friday, he, he receives nothing but the silence and the disdain of the king of kings. And when he dies in his impurity, he receives eternally the stain and the despising of the king of kings. And the king of kings vomits upon him for all eternity. He is not as wicked as the most wicked men. He kind of likes religion. He kind of likes nice things. He just likes a party. He just likes to have fun. He just likes to be with his friends. He just likes to drink a lot. And now he's a whistle. He's got the, his brother's wife. Well, he's just weak. He's, he's just weak. He's not that bad, really. He's not so wicked like his uncle. His uncle Herod the Great... Though he was evil, he was great. His uncle, Herod the Great, he murdered thousands, but he built things. He accomplished things before he went to hell. But what about Herod, the one that mocked Jesus Christ? That is his only claim to fame. He, he, he killed St. John the Baptist because he made a promise to a girl based on impurity. And in order not to offend friends, whose names he didn't even know. And if they came back the next week, he wouldn't know who they were. Shallow and empty. But what was the result of his wickedness? It is the great prophet no longer preaches. The great prophet stopped his preaching because of Herod's impurity. And notice this, that when the devil gets impurity into all of our world, as he has done today, there are many souls that say they love God, that willingly hear how many young men willingly hear the truth? They are very interested in the truth. They're experts in theology on the internet. They're experts in, 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 in whatever they think theology is. And in between their theological considerations, what are they doing? Watching pornography. 
What are they doing? Being immersed in impurity. But they willingly hear nice things. And they willingly hear good things. They're really not that bad. And they don't get in, as involved in the wickedness as, well, as other people do. Just like Herod. He was just a nice guy who was impure. What does Jesus Christ call him? Swine. And the swine of Herod and the swine of those who immerse themselves in impurity, what does it mean when they say, oh, I willingly hear the faith. I willingly watch the truth. I willingly check out the, the truth on the Internet in between watching pornography. I always go and check the truth whenever I can in between pornographic films and in between all kinds of impurity. And I willingly, 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 willingly. What does the Holy Ghost say about Herod the, great Herod, the impure? He willingly heard John the Baptist. He didn't want to hurt John the Baptist, but he wanted impurity. He wanted lust. And therefore, what happened? He was the instrument of Satan to bring the beheading of St. John the Baptist. He could not send his strongest Satanists to kill him. They were stopped. But the man who cares only of his own flesh easily easily brings about the death of John the Baptist. And we're in an age in which the devil is pushing impurity everywhere, all over our world. And why does he push it? One reason, of course, is that it is the most common of sins, and it easily leads souls to hell. But the deeper reason is that these impure souls, generals have known it for thousands of years. Do you want a soldier to do whatever you say? kill women and children, burn down cities, fight, and without any morals, make sure he's an impure soldier. Generals have known that for thousands of years. They always provided prostitutes for their soldiers. They made sure their soldiers were impure because the impure soldier does not have morality. The impure soldier is ready to murder. He is ready to kill the innocent. He's ready to obey any wicked command. Because what is interesting to him is as long as his passions are fulfilled for a brief moment, he will commit any sin. He is immersed in filth and has no problem, who has filthy body, has no problem with a filthy mind. Not just the filthy mind that has to do with impurity, but the filthy mind of lies, the filthy mind of heresy. Herod brought about the beheading of St. John the Baptist because of his impurity. The faith was lost by Luther, the priest, because of his impurity. Henry VIII, as it says in an old English poem, you have many Anglican churches that you say are very great, but your church is built on the lust of Henry VIII. It was not built on foundations. It was built on the lust of a king who died of his lust, who burns now in hell. And because of his lust, he formed a new religion. And because of Luther's lust, he formed a new religion. And the missionaries down the last 2,000 years have noted when they go to other places, we go to India, we go to Africa, we go to the United States and preach amongst the American Indians. And in all pagan religions, in, in Europe, and France, and northern, in northern, uh, in the uh, northern lands of the Norway and Sweden, what was the biggest obstacle of every missionary, from Saint Peter all the way until Peter the second at the end of the world? You must accept the true faith. No problem. You must reject all the false gods. No problem. You can only have one wife. Problem. Only one wife. You got to get rid of all the other 400 concubines. You have only one wife, only one husband, only, and that marriage is until death. Do you accept that? I've got no problem burning idols. I've got no problem uh, destroying all false religions and burning all heretical books. No problem. But the fire of impurity, the fire of lust, this is the problem. And so that, the, that the, the, each missionary has run into it. I'm ready to become a Catholic. I want to become a Catholic. C.S. Lewis, ready to be a Catholic. He only had one problem. Another wife, not his original wife. Otherwise, the Tolkien would have made him into a Catholic. But because he had another wife, because he was in a second invalid marriage, he did not enter the Catholic faith. His mind believed the Catholic faith. His mind, his heart loved the Catholic faith. 
But he had to choose between the love of God, the love of the Catholic faith, and the love of a second wife, who was not his wife. He chose the latter love. And we hope he repented before he died. But so it is throughout all of history. So many souls do not have the faith only because of the law of chastity. Now there's a new prayer. A new prayer that the bishop says, not only a bishop now for 30 days, we put on the cincture. The cincture is where the, the rope that goes around the vest, around the waist, and the cincture, we pray for the virtue of chastity. That's a normal prayer. But when we become a bishop, we add to it another word. Put on me the, the cincture of faith and extinguish the fire of, of lust. But put on me the cincture of faith and maintain chastity. Faith and chastity are put together. Faith and chastity go together. Those who think they can maintain their faith and lose their chastity will discover that they shall lose their faith and they shall destroy the souls all around them. Hence the battle against impurity is a very important battle that must be fought. Now those who sin through weakness and are trying to fight their sins, these there is little danger of them losing their faith. But this is not the way of our world. Many souls are very, very much immersed in impurity. And impurity darkens the mind so that the truth cannot be seen. It's like putting fog over the glasses. Like walk, but putting, putting a, a gray smoke over the eyes. When there is, a, the, it darkens the intellect so the truth cannot be seen. It takes clear weather. It takes a clear sky in order to be able to see the truth. The truth is always there. It never changes. But if there is a storm, a sandstorm, if there is a cloud, if there is smoke, then we cannot see the truth. And impurity creates darkness, it creates cloud, it creates sandstorm, it creates smoke, so that we cannot see the truth. Though the truth is always there. And we all know also, Martin Luther, with his second or third wife, shortly before his death, she was also a nun. And she said to him, which stars will be our stars in heaven, Luther? And he turned to her and said, heaven is not for us. And she went insane. Don't talk of heaven. Heaven is not for us. He knew because of the filth in his mind, the filth in his heart, heaven is not for us. But she said, well, I believe faith alone. No. Our Lord said, he who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall not enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. Luther knew that. Protestants know that. What is the gap? Why can't they see it? Because of the smoke of lust. Because of the impurity that founded their own religion. It was lust that founded Protestantism. Lust that founded Anglicanism. And lust that destroyed Herod who made him impossible to be able to hear the word of God. He willingly wanted to see Christ. It says it very clearly in the gospel. He wanted to see Christ. Pilate was woke up in the morning. He did not want to see Christ. He wanted to get rid of Christ. And yet Christ spoke to Pilate. Herod was anxious to see Christ. He was happy to see him. He wanted to hear his words. He wanted to see a miracle. He, he, saw, he knew so much about his miracles in Galilee. He was so interested at Jesus Tachebat. And Jesus was remaining silent. Why the imperfect tense? Because it never ends. His silence is never going to end. Hence in our combat against the heresies of our age and against the problem of modernism in Vatican II, we must remember it is necessary to be both combat the errors but also live according to holy chastity. Purity strengthens the soul. Purity gives us strength. It says, and by this purity, it says, may I have the strength and vigor and joy of a totius casitatus. The end of that prayer. May we have the strength and sweetness that comes from a whole chastity. I'm putting on the sanctuary now, saying a new prayer for the last 29 days. May there be 
a chastity of the whole of the strength and vigor and joy, sweetness and joy that comes from chastity and faith. And when it is necessary that there be a promotion of chastity and faith, also in the vows and oaths taken before being consecrated a bishop 30 days ago, on this day the 29th, do you solemnly swear that you will teach faith and chastity, you will teach faith and morals to your flock, not just the faith, but also chastity. I do. Volo. And so remember that it is not enough to simply have faith. It is not enough to simply say, I believe. But there must be the battle of chastity. And remember that Herod is one of the deepest places of hell. And yet he was not as wicked as Uncle Herod the Great. He was not as wicked as Caiaphas or Annas. And yet he is the one who beheaded John the Baptist because of a bet. Because at a party. St. Augustine says, who cannot be disgusted? Who cannot be so disturbed that here the greatest of prophets? Was he killed in a great battle by the enemies that attacked him? No, he was killed at a party. And was he killed because he upset someone at the party? No, he was killed because of a bet. And because the one in charge, Herod, did not want to offend his shallow guests. And for such a small and pathetic reign, reason, which makes sense only to the impure, John the Baptist died. There he went to his glory, and that chisel that cut is forgotten and burns and is wasted forever. And Herod was a failure from beginning to end because of his swine's flesh. And we must fight against the swine's flesh, and we must maintain a faithful chastity. And remember also, those who think they are so proud, so confident in their minds, so confident in their intelligence, so confident in their wisdom, if they don't combat impurity, if they don't defeat impurity, their wisdom shall be taken from them. Consider the wisest of all men that have ever lived, according to the Holy Ghost. His name is Solomon. He wrote the books of sacred scripture, the book of wisdom, the book of Proverbs. And these wisest of all men that have ever lived, did he save his soul? We don't know. He may very well be in hell or in purgatory until the end of the world. But he did not become a saint. And why? Because of impurity. The wisest of all men, Solomon, what did he do? He had so many wives that he chose from other people. God said to him, why? What's wrong with an Israeli woman? What's wrong with the Jewish women? You have many Jewish women to choose. Remember, they were allowed to have more than one wife in those days. You could take any of the Jewish women. But you chose strange women. You chose women from outside of Israel. You chose women that worship false gods. And what happened? You thought your wisdom, Solomon, would keep you from building temples to the false gods. It did not. Who built the first temples of false gods? It was not the wicked son of Solomon, Roboam. But it was rather Solomon himself who began to build temples to the false gods. And then what did his son do? My father built temples to false gods, and he is the wise Solomon. So don't complain about me building temples to the false gods. Don't complain about me turning away from the true God. I am following my father, the wise Solomon. And who are you? And Roboam is most wicked, and Roboam ends up in the kingdom of hell. And Roboam lived a wicked kingship, because of the wise Solomon. If you have wisdom and fight not against impurity, if we have wisdom and not maintain purity, the wisdom shall be taken from us. And in the old age, God came to the wise Solomon and said, Solomon, I am going to punish you. I want you to know, I will not let you suffer in your life because of the promise I made to your father David. But you must know, when you die, there's nothing but disaster in your children and children's children's lives. And I shall lay waste to the kingdom of Israel. I said to David, I will let this kingdom last forever. I say to you, it shall be destroyed. And why? Because of the impurity of the wise Solomon. And so we must understand that it is most important 
to fight against this impurity and don't believe that intelligence and wisdom can be kept without chastity. And remember to pray to the Blessed Virgin Mary. It's one of the many reasons why the priests cannot have a wife. Many, many reasons why priests should have a wife. Christ should have a wife. But one reason is he must be wise. One reason is he must be dedicated to the truth. He must be married to the truth. And the flesh tends to pull us away from the truth and distract us from the truth. It's one of the many, many reasons why a priest should not be married. But what happened to the wisdom of Solomon? It was taken away. And so we don't want this wisdom to be taken from us, but to maintain a perfect purity and chastity that goes along with faith. Let not our faith be taken from us because of unchastity. And remember lastly, this chastity can only be maintained by the love and complete confidence in the Holy Mother. We must have a love and complete confidence Blessed Virgin Mary and ask her to teach us the, 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 and give us the strength of great chastity and fidelity according to our state of life and that uh, this fidelity be maintained all the way to the end. God bless you all. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Amen. Ghost. Amen.